testosterone is is vital. It's vital for us men because it's a strong cousin to dopamine, which is a uh, you know, getting our, our drive, our, our motivation and, you know, our, our will to, to achieve something great. And as an actor, I, I think that's truly valuable because, you know, this is what gets you up in the morning and wanting to take action, take risks. And I, I truly think this is the actor's edge, right? This is a very powerful tool because if you can optimize your lifestyle so that you can improve your testosterone levels, you're going to see tremendous growth in your career and also in your life. So yeah, that's the, basically the reason why I wanted to talk about testosterone and uh, why is it important? Well, you know, the more testosterone that you have, the more muscle that you will be able to build. And also this will improve your body composition levels and, you know, decrease your body fat levels to at least, you know, healthier ranges or, you know, maybe in the, nine to 10% range. If you want to look like Tarzan over there, right? No disrespect to Leo, right? Actually he has probably a healthy weight in this picture, but if you want to stand out and, you know, create better opportunities for you and just increase your confidence levels, uh, you know, having high testosterone can be a, a huge benefit for you. And like I said, it's a close cousin to dopamine, so more drive and motivation. And you take more risk. Creatively, especially, you know, you, you feel more present on, on camera, whether it's on auditions or when you're listening to your scene partner, you know, the, the less brain fog that you have, which usually if you have high testosterone and you have a, a good diet, well, usually you're, you're, you're going to minimize brain fog and you're just going to feel more present. You're going to have this, this aura around you that, um, that is attractive, right? And, you know, we can have more lead roles opportunities. Um, you know, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to say really how I don't have data to, to show like what the markets uh, are like right now, but typically, you know, a lead role that requires a strong presence and, uh, you know, a strong uh, looking physique, you know, usually these people are going to get the lead roles. And today I understand the movement that we're trying to, to normalize everything. You know, it's almost as if right now we're trying to normalize obesity, which I think is one of the worst fucking thing ever. Cause you want to promote, you know, dying earlier. <laughs> you want to promote something that is one of the number one causes of, of mortality and, you know, cardiorespiratory diseases. I don't think that's a good movement to promote or to normalize, right? And, you know, you, you, were, you will not have high testosterone if you are overweight or obese. Let me tell you, your quality of life is probably much worse than mine or other people with, healthy, with a healthy weight and lifestyle. And, you know, if we're thinking long-term in your 50s, 60s, and you still want to do this craft that you love, you may want to consider right now how you can optimize your testosterone for the long term and doing this for a very long fucking time, right? So testosterone, what is it? Not to get too sciency, but it's mostly made uh, by pregnenolone, okay, which comes from cholesterol, which comes from fats which is why fats, guys, are important in your diet in order to, to have optimal levels of testosterone. But yeah, testosterone is known as the sex hormone. It's more prevalent in men, but it's also, you can also see that in women. Women also have testosterone levels. But uh, mostly in men, it is produced in the testes via the male endocrine system, or also known as the HPTA axis. And it's typically highest in the morning, uh, tapers off, you know, around the afternoon uh, or lowers, and, and then uh, it repeats the cycle itself. So testosterone levels, guys, really goes up and down. Uh, but, you know, if you have optimal levels, yes, it may go down still, but it's not going to go drastically down to, you know, and, and stay there. You know, usually uh, it's going to keep a, a good trajectory. And, you know, it's not just for sex drive, testosterone. Like I said, it's good for your motivation, your drive, and your, also your joint health, you know, keeping you, uh, you know, injury-free. Organ health, 
pr protects your organs and also your immune system, you know, your immune health. You're not going to be as sick as often, you know, and when you're sick as an actor, I mean, it affects your voice, your mood, your energy, and you don't want to be sick all the time, you know, every time we change a season or something. So you want to optimize your testosterone levels because it also optimizes uh, your overall health. And times have changed today, you know, uh, for the last 50 plus years, uh, there's been studies that are average testosterone, testosterone now is close to 400 nanograms per deciliter. That's total T levels uh, compared to 1400 uh, nanograms per deciliter, which was, uh, you know, it shows in 1943. And, you know, it's funny because if you would have that score today uh, in a sport, for example, people would think you, you're taking performance enhancing drugs. So it's, it's crazy today how the expectations are so low. And if you're like my man over there in this picture, just drinking beer, watching TV, eating chips. Uh, yeah, that could be a big reason why today testosterone levels are lower than ever. And the food quality is getting poorer and poorer. And there's no reason for us today to work out, get to the gym, because everything is handed to us. Everything is delivered to us, right? And that promotes uh, a lifestyle that is very sedentary, you know, and also chemicals and, you know, fragrance you put on you and, you know, just pollution overall and pesticides on, on food. And, and yeah, as far as training also, it, it could also be a detriment, even if you exercise, because... Right now, today, we're promoting eating less, moving more. And, you know, if you do all this, this silly boot camp workouts where you're jumping around and, and dying on the floor each time after your workouts, and on top of that, you undereat and eat little to no carbs, well, fuck. No wonder why you feel like shit. It's like, it's, I don't know why we... I don't know why the big companies are promoting this lifestyle because they should know better. They should know better, right? Like, we're lacking so much common sense today. Like, it's crazy. And when you're stressed all the time, and when you're adding stress to your body by constantly under eating and doing these nonsensical workouts, well, no fucking, no fucking wonder why you, you feel like shit and you're not losing any more weight because your body is constantly in a fight or flight mode. It's atrocious, right? And men stop being men. What I mean by this is, you know, divorce rate is as high as ever today. And social media, especially today, it always seems like you're, you're seeing a debate now. And, and I don't know, relationships are not like it used to be, right? Men and women are, are better together than we are apart. But what you see now today on social media and stuff, it just creates this, this divide in this, right? And um, it's not good. And, you know, if you grow up without a father figure around, it's going to affect your, your masculinity. It's going to affect you. And, you know, usually in, in any relationship, I don't care about your, your sexual orientation, but usually there is a masculine energy and a feminine energy to create that polarity, to create that completeness. And when you lack these things or when you're competing for for both uh energy well it just creates this this divisiveness right and yeah times have changed really they have changed but if we're going back to testosterone you know ask yourself these three questions pretty simple are you overweight how's your sleep and are you overstressed all the time right if you answer yes to one, two, or all of these questions, well, more than likely, your testosterone levels are not optimal. So first thing, you know, stress, shit sleep, and a high body fat percentage equals low testosterone. So if you answered yes on all of these questions, well, how you sleep, you, you don't answer by yes. But if it was like shit, you more than likely have lower testosterone. And these three elements, guys, I mean, this is the root cause of, of pretty much every actor or everyone, uh, really, that has low testosterone. Because if you run from a bear, imagine you run from a bear, and after two hours, 
you finally lost the bear. Uh, you're going to crash. You're going to crash once you're done. Once you're done running, you're going to feel like this, this crazy crash, you know, or you see these crazy stories of someone lifting a car to save a child stuck or something like that. And after that, they, they go, they go into shock and, and pass out or even die sometimes. Um, I know these are extreme stories, but what I'm saying is that when your cortisol is like at a extreme high and then it drops, you have a sudden drop of energy. You're just going to crash and burn. So imagine uh, associating that with your life. If you're always stressed, if you have you know, all these deadlines, you, know, you get stressed out every time you have a goddamn audition. You undereat. You do these crazy boot camp workouts. So you keep elevating that stress over and over. Well, this is why, guys, you're, you're just not putting your, your body in a position for, optimizes, for optimizing testosterone because cortisol and testosterone operate via the same axis, which is the HPTA axis. Okay, so let's say you produce testosterone, come, starts in the hypothalamus, then, you know, goes down all the way to your, uh, your testes and produces testosterone and all that. Then, you know, you're going to get another signal to your brain to keep that cycle repeating. But if you're in a stressed uh, environment, whether it's through, you know, just being stressed or, you know, excessively working out or having shit sleep or, or whatever, well, your body's going to say, no, no, we're, we're not going to make more testosterone. We're going to make cortisol instead and go through, uh, through our adrenals. So which is why, guys, that, you know, if you would prioritize, uh, you know, controlling your stress, you might be already at a better position to improve your testosterone uh, production, okay? And yeah, what you can do is number one, diet. Diet, you know, improves, <laughs> will improve your testosterone levels. Because like I said, testosterone uh, comes from mainly dietary fats, so fats. Uh, so having a variety of fats is key for improving your testosterone levels. You know, if you're constantly on a low-fat diet, or something like that. Um, you just, you know, yeah, you're, you're just gonna eventually uh, crash and, and feel like shit. Even if your calories are at, you know, adequate levels, you need fats because pregnenolone comes from testo uh, from, you know, sorry, pregnenolone comes from cholesterol, which comes from fat. So you need fat. And, you know, but that doesn't mean you can eat like a, you know, McDonald's or, other fatty foods and tasty foods that are high in sugars and high in fats, but you just say, Oh no, it's high in fat. So I'm going to build lots of testosterone. It doesn't work that way because if you eat lots of fats coming from vegetable oils, seed oils and stuff like that, you're going to increase your inflammation, which in turns is a stress response, which will, you know, affect your testosterone levels. So having and you know, omega threes is also good because omega threes lowers your inflammation as opposed to omega six, right? So omega threes, anything that that comes from fatty fishes, fish oils, nuts, seeds, uh, will help to lower that inflammation. Fish oils, I recommend um, cod. Cod liver oil is a good one. Or any oils, any fish oils, really, that, that have a good ratio of DHA to EPA. Because most uh, fish oils have a high EPA dose compared to DHA. So usually you want the, the opposite, okay? And avoid ethyl ester form. Ethyl ester form usually uh, is not the best quality fish oil, okay? And yeah, just limit your processed food intake. I understand you you want to enjoy your life, but you know that doesn't mean you completely eliminate it. Uh, you know, uh, twenty percent of your total calories could be you know allocated to to food that you love. You know, so it could be five hundred calories out of your twenty five hundred calories, for example. And you know, if you think I hate my life and I eat chicken and broccoli all the time. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. It's it's very easy to to enjoy life and look great at the same time. Uh, let's keep that in mind. 
and other good sources of food as far as oils and butter, extra virgin olive oil. It's a great oil to, to sprinkle uh, on stuff. I would avoid cooking uh, uh, high, heat, high heat with um, extra virgin olive oil. High heat, I would be, you know, more uh, towards coconut oil, maybe grass-fed butter, avocado oils. And as far as food, you know, avocados as well, eggs, bacon is great, pistachios, pumpkin seeds, red meat, salmon, uh, salmon and other uh, lean meats, you know, turkey, chicken. So a variety uh, of fats there. Um, just be mindful that fats are nine calories per gram as opposed to four calories per gram uh, when it comes to proteins and carbs. So it can get your calories up fairly quickly. So if you, you're tracking and if you are in a deficit right now because you want to lose body fat, just keep in mind that if you have very high fat in your diet, it might be tougher to, to, to get your protein goals if you have lots of fat in your diet. So, you know, protein, I would say, is king for everything, whether you're losing fat uh, or building muscle you want to make sure that your protein intake is met. I don't talk about protein in this, but just for reference, you know, 0.8 gram to one gram per pound of your body weight is recommended. Okay. So, you know, as far as fats, let's, let's put it this way. The more fat that you have to lose, uh, you probably need to eat more of it. Okay. Because the reason I'm saying that is because you probably don't process carbs as efficiently as someone in a healthy uh, weight range, right? This is called insulin sensitivity, right? And someone who's diabetic uh, don't doesn't process carbs easily because, um, you know, when, when you do eat something that is high in carbs, you know, uh, your insulin kicks in and then, you know, stores stores that in, you know, in the liver or, you know, uh, in your, in your cells. And, you know, if you, if you can't process, if your insulin sensitivity is not high, which means you have less insulin receptors, that's, that's going to mean that you're going to have lots of, of blood, blood sugar hanging out in, in your, in your bloodstream, which, you know, if you have high levels of blood sugars, that can be problematic, right? So, what I mean is if you have lots of, of weight to lose, lots of fat to lose, it is recommended that you you lower a bit your carb intake so that you, you can reset that insulin sensitivity. So for me, for example, I just keep my fat around 20 to 35% of my total calories. But if I, I would say if you have lots of weight to lose, maybe over 20, over 20 to 30 pounds, I would maybe keep my fats around, you know, 40% to 70%, 70% being keto diet. I would not recommend, you know, full blown keto diet, but, you know, just be mindful of lowering your carbs. If you have lots of weight to lose resistance training guys, it is, you know, extremely valuable. You, you need to do this in order first to, like I said, restore your insulin sensitivity. And, you know, it's, it's hard to have high levels of testosterone. If you're not working out, if you're not building muscle, the more muscle you can build, the higher testosterone levels, simply put, okay? And three full body workouts, pretty much is all you need, especially in, in, in when you start. And, you know, you, you've you got to improve your bench press, your overhead press, your squat, your deadlift. You, you got to get good at these movements. I also put in there weighted pull-ups, chin-ups. Notice I put weighted, right? Body weight is great. If you can, if you can get to that level, you're way ahead of the curve. But if you can add some weight to these movements, uh, this is where you're really going to see your, your body shine and, and transform. And usually, you know, standing out like a movie star comes from having a, a lower body fat percentage. We're talking 10% body fat or lower, right? And, you know, if we look at a medium shot, it's all about those rounded shoulders, you know, a defined upper chest right there, traps chisel jawline, even the neck and, you know, that V taper. So narrow, narrowing that physique and seeing that six pack, those obliques. And also, you know, by building the shoulders and the back, this is just, this just widens your physique and makes your waist even narrower. Right. So this is, um, 
good protocol if you want to build that movie star body. And an example, guys, to build your workouts, you know, start with one to two compound movements in the beginning, then, you know, finish with some isolation movements uh, in the end. Isolation is just working one muscle. So it could be bicep curl, tricep extension, leg extension, things like that. Okay. And, you know, if you need a full guide on how to do everything uh, I've talked about, uh, I've got a free guide, uh, free, uh, free guide in my Facebook group. Uh, usually this is towards uh, lean bulking. So building muscle while minimizing fat gain, but you can also apply this. If you're trying to lose body fat, you just need to tweak your caloric intake, which I talk about in this guide. So, but in this guide, you're going to learn all these things I've highlighted there. So anything from calculating your caloric intake and along with an 18 week workout program uh, with an emphasis on endurance, hypertrophy, and then strength. <clears throat> and yeah, thirdly, uh, sleep quality guys is key. Okay. If your sleep is crap, you're, it's going to affect the rest of your life not also your testosterone levels, but also just overall your mood, your energy, your cravings, anything. I mean, sleep and stress, if you can take care of these two things to start, you're going to become a much, much better actor, much better human to be around, okay? Because we grow when we recover, okay? We, we don't grow when we go to the gym. We actually break down muscle tissues when we go to the gym. It is a catabolic activity. You know, when you sleep, this is where you produce the growth hormones and, and testosterone. And, you know, seven to nine hours of sleep per night is optimal. You know, seven to nine hours, that is uh, uninterrupted. So I don't mean like you go to bed at midnight and wake up at seven, but you've woken up a bunch of times in between. No, it is seven to nine hours of, of actual sleep time. Okay. And I touch on lots of tips on this. There's, you know, I believe 13 tips on this guide that is attached to um, also in my Facebook group. So if you ever need this sleep guide, I uh, highly recommend, or you can just message, message me personally, and I'll hand it over. Because the effects of poor sleep, guys, I mean, yeah, not only lowers your testosterone and also kills your gangs pretty much. And impairs your insulin sensitivity, what I talked about. This is a great way to hold on to, to body fat, increase your cravings, and, you know, fall off the diet more easily because you don't think cl clearly. I mean, you, you're all brain fogged and it just makes you less creative as an artist, right? And, you know, that can increase your anxiety levels, worst case, depression, burnout, uh, you know, poor performance also in the gym, but also in your career. And can also create depersonalization. So you just lag the ability to connect with people. Everything is annoying you. Everything you're, you feel defensive all the time and everything is bothering you. So these are um, really important guys to keep in mind. Sleep, you got to pay attention. Okay? And don't forget, lastly, vitamin D. I mean, this is vital for immunity and, you know, it comes from sunlight. You can also supplement with vitamin D and it actually has a strong correlation with testosterone production. So it's highly valuable that you get your vitamin D up and, you know, it could be first thing in the morning, getting five to 15 minutes, 30 minutes of sun exposure. You no know, great time to go for a, a coffee, walk to that coffee shop, get some sun exposure on you. Right? This is a great way to reset your circadian rhythm so that you, you suppress that melatonin production in the day. And you know, by the time nighttime hits, you're going to feel more tired. You're going to feel more receptive to going to bed because you had the, the sunlight in your eyes during the day and on your skin. And if you're supplementing with vitamin D, highly recommend this formula where you take your weight in pounds divided by 25 and then multiply by a thousand. So for example, if I'm 185, I would need roughly 7,400, 7,500 IUs, okay? 
So recap, uh, steps that you can start implementing today to improve your testosterone levels. Uh, get yourself to a healthy weight first. This would be uh, my, my best recommendation because if you're at a healthy weight, your hormones, you know, not, not only testosterone, but your thyroid, you know, your insulin and all of that are going to be at an optimal environment. And for men, that's typically at least 15% body fat or lower. Okay. And secondly, give your body a reason to build muscle. So start doing resistance training three times per week. Okay. Follow my guide in the Facebook group. It is a step-by-step -step process. You will not get lost doing that. Just follow it and implement it and message me if you have any questions, okay? And thirdly, manage your stress. So relax, meditate, journal, do some journaling and just chill out for 90 minutes in the day at least, you know, when your day's over. Get yourself some time to chill the hell out, right? And, you know, have adequate fats in your diet. Have a variety of fats, Optimize your sleep quality. There's also my guide on this if you need it. And also, yeah, I, I didn't touch on this, but drink alcohol moderately, you know, because it's been shown that one to two drinks a day for three weeks can decrease your testosterone as much as 7%, okay? And also, when you drink, you don't get into that deep sleep. You just become unconscious, sort of which you never get into that, that deep REM sleep. So this not only affects your sleep quality, but it all is, it's going to affect, you know, your testosterone levels and it slows down your metabolism. You know, when you drink, it slows down your metabolism. And typically when we drink, we want to eat food, you know, at 2 AM or whatever, and then you increase your caloric intake and you probably more than likely get into a surplus. And, you know, if you keep doing that lifestyle, you know, it could be a big reason why you see lots of, of college kids having these man boobs and, and just being overweight. So alcohol can, you know, create this, this snowball effect with other parts of your lifestyle. So keep that in mind. Just moderation is key. So yeah, no more slides. That's all guys. Uh, thanks for, for listening. I know I can be, uh, you know, a bit boring sometimes with my presentations, but hey, it's a learning process. I'm trying to be more entertaining, entertaining, be more, uh, you know, better with my, my speech because, you know, English is not my first language. So it's, you know, it's a learning process, but I hope you, you've learned something today and just message me if you need uh, those guides and join my Facebook group, okay? If you haven't already or invite your friends, okay? If you think they could get lots of value out of that. So cheers, guys. Talk to you soon.